Hello cool ass, it's Pablo here and welcome back to Barcelona Egg of this round of 16 Champions League tie. Barcelona haven't been able to make the comeback, but to be fair to them, we came into the game we said, let's see a performance, let's take the game to PSG, let's see what we've got. And you know what, Ronald Koeman aside, absolutely dominated that game. I thought PSG were really, really poor, I thought Barcelona were excellent, and I'm not quite sure how it ended 1-1. To be fair, there's quite a lot to talk about considering the game has ended only one all, so let's get started. And let's actually start with that team selection, which in itself was quite interesting. You saw De Jong come in there at centre-back next to Mingetha and Longley. Mingetha actually got brought off quite early there, basically because he was on a yellow card against Mbappe. You had Dest and Alba as the wing-backs, of course, to Stegen in goal. Then it was Busquets and Pedri in midfield, and actually Griezmann in there up front next to Messi and next to Dembélé. And you've got to say, that worked. Barcelona were excellent really throughout the game. I thought, of course, we dropped off in that second half after numerous occasions and moments had already passed. But I thought overall, guys, from Barcelona, this setup worked and we were really, really good tonight. Because I think you saw the way Barcelona started the match. Yes, PSG had that threat with Mbappe, but I thought PSG, from about the fifth minute onwards, they were on the ropes. You can clearly see the ghosts of the past have not left those PSG players. They looked really, really rattled. I was seeing them just watching loose balls go by. Griezmann, Dembélé had a lot of joy in the opening exchanges. Serginho Dest also against, against Kozawa. And look, I'll probably forget numerous chances as the game goes on, but that's basically just because we had so goddamn many in that first half. And the fact that we only scored one goal before the break was absolutely criminal for being honest with ourselves Alba kept on getting in we were just suffocating and suffocating PSG yes Mbappe had a few breakaways but other than that guys it was pure dominance from Barcelona and you got to say guys Barcelona by the time of the 22nd minute and it was still nil nil you were wondering is it going to be on our night because we did have chances Dembélé I think mainly he was getting in behind a lot in the first 25 minutes he just couldn't convert guys uh, Kaylon Navas made a few really good saves Busquets also uh, was getting some good shots from outside the box he was flicking on corner kicks in there. You also saw Serginho Dest, of course. I mentioned him briefly there. He skinned Kazawa and hit the crossbar. Kazawa was on a yellow card the whole game. And really for PSG, guys, they looked a little bit broken back there. They looked scared. They were just trying to get the ball up to Mbappe. But I do think without Di Maria, without Neymar, they really lacked quality tonight. I thought they were really, really poor PSG. And let's be honest with ourselves. PSG have got away with one tonight. Dest taking the crossbar. Dembélé coming close on numerous occasions. We just didn't have the quality to kill them in the final third. And their luck really continued, guys. Because not only were PSG somehow not losing in this game, they then actually went 1-0 up. A ridiculous penalty for me. Look, this for me is where Vieira... It just makes an absolute shambles. It's Icardi who goes in at the back post. The ball isn't even close to him. To Stegen gathers it carefully after one of PSG's very few attacks. But it's Longley who accidentally clips Icardi as he's running. VAR called Anthony Taylor over. Once he sees it, he gives it. And Mbappe scores. PSG won the up. And that's annoying. One, I think the decision was a little bit dodgy. I just don't really know about giving penalties like that, really. If we're giving them, you know, the sport, it just, it just kills it a little bit for me. But also in terms of performance-wise, guys, I mentioned there Barcelona were so, so good in that opening half an hour. And PSG were dreadful. And yet they're one nil up. And that just basically says it all, doesn't it? If we want to become a top team, we know we have to kill chances. I'll be getting onto that more later. But it just is the case. But to be fair, Barcelona, we didn't exactly stop. Because about five, seven minutes later, Lionel Messi scores one of the most ridiculous goals you will ever see. This is absolutely insane from Messi. And to be fair to Barcelona, I actually myself thought after going 1-0 down, we're just going to throw in the towel here. We're just going to play the game out quite slow. A little bit like we did in the second half, to be fair, that sort of game. But we didn't. We just kept going at PSG. And Messi here scores an unbelievable goal. Keylor Navas, even himself, who was on inspired form, he's not saving this one. Far, far out. Lashes into the top corner. A thunderbolt from Messi. And Barcelona level now. Deservedly so. He deserves way more than that. But at least Messi there gets a brilliant goal. And about 20 seconds after the play restarted after this Barcelona goal, for me, we certainly could have had a penalty. And I just don't really get how the one on Icardi from Longley's little trip there is a penalty. And this from Keylor Navas and Serginho Dest is not. I don't really get. I see why they haven't given it. Look, Keylor, he gets a slight touch on the ball with his glove. And that's why they haven't given it. But he comes out far out of his goal. He misjudges the situation. And for me, he clatters Serginho Dest. That should have been a penalty. The game certainly could have been different had that been given. And I don't really get how how that one wasn't given all truth, but Barcelona just kept on going. We just relentlessly were pushing at PSG. We had some good chances. Kaylon Navas was making numerous outstanding saves as the half went on, and it was actually bang on before half time, guys. When the game, this for me was the moment because it's actually Levin Kazawa who's already on a yellow card who kicks Griezmann inside the penalty area, 45th minute, and this is where everything changes, guys. For me, 
First of all, this was a penalty for Barcelona. If we had scored this, guys, and gone 2-1 up, this would have been an unbelievable chance for us to make the comeback. Secondly, guys, because for me, this was a second yellow card. I'm not really sure why he didn't get sent off. Not many people are talking about this because Kazawa doesn't get sent off. What ends up happening, guys, is Messi takes the penalty. Kazawa's still on the pitch. Halon Navas saves onto the crossbar. And PSG survives. So what could have been the chance for Barcelona to go 2-1 up, perhaps for PSG to go down to 10 men. It ends up staying at one all. PSG with 11 on the pitch. They sub off Kozawa at half-time, and everything's fine. And that basically there, guys, is football. It's the margins. And you even saw after the penalty, VAR actually checked, and they said, look, hang on a minute, don't start the play yet, Anthony Taylor. We're going to take a look for enroachment here. And basically what that is, it's when players enter the D, if you like, you know, the penalty area and the little D there, the little circle on the edge of the penalty area before Messi shoots it. And unbelievably, guys, they check for encroachment and they watch Verratti step into the D and then head out the clearance after it comes back off the crossbar and still say play on. I don't really get that. And this is what I'll say. To be fair for me, encroachment, it happens every single goddamn penalty. The player, they all come in the box. We know that. But I just cannot comprehend how VAR, who've already made some bad calls in this game for the PSG penalty, for the potential death penalty, I cannot believe they watch that and then say, look, Anthony Taylor, wait, mate, we're going to check for encroachment. And then see Verratti does indeed come into the D, heads out the clearance, and then go and tell Anthony Taylor, yeah, play on, mate. What happens there? We need explanations for that sort of stuff. I don't really get it. Either way, Barcelona, after an incredible first half, where, to be fair to them, they really went for it. We asked for performance. We certainly got it from Koeman's team. We dominated and suffocated PSG. But it was one all, guys. That's the bottom line. And I do think that was where the game went. Because, to be fair, in the second half, we kept going. Yep, you know, we brought Tanin Kao on. I did actually think that PSG subs actually slowed down the game. They brought Danilo Pereira on for Gay. They brought Di Maria on later. But I think the main one was bringing Diallo on at left back instead of Kozawa. Kozawa, I don't really get why they play him full stop, to be honest. I think Diallo should actually just play there. But him not having the yellow card there, he really did, ended up dealing with Dest and also Tanin Kao there in that second period. And Barcelona still did have a few chances here and there. Kaylor made some good saves. Uh, Messi he was actually in around the hour mark that could have changed the game he just got his shot away only just and it's actually Marquinhos with a great block there that certainly could have been a goal for Barcelona you also look at Dembélé he flashed in across the front post Busquets had a corner save by Keylor Navas and I'm still listing here chances when I didn't even think Barcelona were that good in the second half I'm still listing so many goddamn chances but we just couldn't score guys and back ahead one in the final minutes but I thought PSG again that whole second half really really poor that would be a little bit worrying for them it doesn't look like if they play like that they'll be getting far at all in the Champions League but for Barcelona I'm not annoyed because I didn't think we'd go through after losing 4-1 at home in the first leg but you've got to say guys that game was on Barcelona could have scored seven or eight goals tonight had we been more clinical and it does beg the question we've been saying all season do Barcelona need to sign a striker? And I think the answer is yes, guys. It's not always just one player, but I do think someone at Erling Haaland, guys, of course, he's going to help in these situations for Barca. Laporta would have been watching the game tonight. And to be fair, that was a Laporta performance from Barcelona. We really gave it our all today. We suffocated PSG. Made one of our best performances of the season, guys. Away at a top grounding. It's a top team. I thought we did really, really well. 4-1 down. And I don't really know how it ended one all. So for Barcelona, I think the same issues again, isn't it? We just can't finish. We don't have that conviction, that quality, really, in the final third. And that is just irritating, isn't it? We need to see that more in the future. We have to improve in that department. But for today, keep your head held high. Barcelona looking up right now. I'm impressed with how we played tonight. We're doing well in La Liga. And fortunately, Atletico also won tonight. But we've got to keep winning our games. We've got a really big game against West Ham Monday. We have to win uh, three points there. Then we've got, actually got Real Sociedad away before the international break. That's a massive game. We need a, a performance similar to this one, actually, if we're going to be getting three points out of that one. So for Barcelona, two big La Liga games before the international break, and we've got to win them all. Then we come back after then, guys, and you've got to say, it's the sprint for La Liga, isn't it? Win every game. And of course, that Copa del Rey final against Athletic Club, we have to win that game also. So for Barcelona, keep your heads high. La Porta's back. Today was really good. I'm not really quite sure how we didn't win, but hey, it's football. We move on. We have got big moments coming up, so that's where I'll leave it. Please leave all your thoughts in the comments down below. This was my match review for Barcelona 1, PSG 1 in the Champions League in Paris. And I'll see you guys very soon for more videos in the next few days. Goodbye.